What's going on guys, Sean here, um, actually one of the newest members probably to the MV Augusta family. Uh, you can see I'm next to my uh, bright shiny new uh, Dragster 800RR which uh, I picked up um, unfortunately about two months ago and we're just now getting, uh, getting to the point to where we can get on it and ride it around and there's a, a whole saga behind that which uh, maybe we'll get into in, a, in another video or two here. but. Uh, Ultimately, what I've found is, you know, when you start digging into MV Augusta and you start looking at the content of videos out there, if you're running into some challenges or you're running into some things that you just want to know more about the bike, there just isn't a wealth of content out there. Um, at the end of the day, there's a few key things with this bike, bike specifically that I think is going to be beneficial for some of you guys to know. So, um, the first problem I ran into was uh, I bought the bike out of state. So within that process, what you get is you get a delivery window, which is, you know, anywhere from 30 to 45 days out. Uh, for me, it was about 45 days out. So you get a bike that may or may not have been fully charged upon, the, um, you know, the pickup. And as they transit it to, a, you know, probably a holding or uh, a cross-loading dock or something like that, and it sits in storage for a little bit of time, ultimately the battery is going to run low, right? Um, and hopefully, you know, when you pull it off the trailer, you hop on that sucker and you start her up and it's uh, a brilliant day, you know, the first day on your bike. Uh, for me, uh, it was a little less uh, good of a story. It was a little bit more dramatic in the fact that, you know, the bike would power on, you could turn it on, you could cycle through menus within the, uh, the display, but ultimately there just wasn't enough power in the battery to crank it. Um, you'll see on the forums out there that a lot of people are displeased with the factory battery that comes in uh, this bike and, and some of the other uh, models in the lineup. So um, maybe at some point we'll get into the replacement of the battery. But the first thing you're going to learn if you're talking about the charging system or the battery is that it's located back in here, clear in the far regions underneath the tank. It's not like uh, most of the Japanese sport bikes where it's readily accessible. You can just pull the seat off, get to the terminals. Um, so ultimately what we found was, you know, we've got a bike that needs charged. Uh, we'll just pop the seat off and we'll throw some, uh, we'll throw a charger on there, a triple charger or something overnight. Uh, be ready to go in the morning. Eh, not that easy. Uh, so, that said, I uh, figured it'd be beneficial to kind of run through uh, the process at which we figured out how to charge this bike uh, without completely dismantling it, a uh, brand new bike, to try and get to the battery terminals. Um, you know, the, I can't take full credit for this. We did find this video online. Um, it was a, an Italian video with two gentlemen speaking in Italian, so it was really kind of a watch what they're doing. and. Uh, follow the leader, and I think it was on an F3. Um, but ultimately, um, the first thing obviously you're going to do is you're going to, you know, turn the key on, see if you got power, and uh, try and turn it over. It's not turn it over. You, at least you got some power. Uh, but there is uh, two two things. Um, there is a an adapter that has leads to the battery for a trickle charger. MV Augusta sells a specific triple charger that can fit to this bike um, and it's underneath the seat we'll show you that here in a second um, I did not elect to go with the MV Augusta branded triple charger I elected to go with the SeaTac which you know I'm more familiar with I think it's a robust brand it's got a lot of market credibility um, and we'll show you that stuff here in a second but I think the the critical piece that I wanted to show you first was how we got the bike started so you know, the, the first thing you're going to know, note is there is um, a plastic shield right here under the tank, under the uh, kind of the intake on the, the upper right hand side of the bike. Uh, we're going to remove that. Uh, if you've got a set of metric Allen keys, it's a 2.5 uh, that's going to pull that Allen key out of there. But if you don't, uh, the good news is underneath the seat, um, which you use to unlock the seat with your key, just pull it out, it's on the left hand side of the bike about halfway down, uh, pull the seat off and what you'll find underneath the seat here is just a real generic, uh, we'll call it a toolkit, but um, with two allen keys and a fuse puller. So you can just pull that two and a half out of there 
and uh, that's going to be the one that's going to take that specific uh, plastic shielding off to expose what we're going to be working with underneath of there. So let me go ahead and pull uh, the Allen key I'm going to use here um, and then I'll uh, show you that shield as we take it off. So we're just going to go in here and pull the shield off real quick. Uh, it's just one Allen bolt, uh, Allen head bolt, and the bottom part is secured with a rubber grommet that is uh, just kind of anti-vibration and holds it in place from the bottom. So you can kind of see the rubber grommet there. It's just a pin that pushes in there, so don't be afraid to just pull it right out. Um, and you don't want to lose your, uh, your Allen head bolt there. So set those down in a place where you're not going to trip over it. And then what you'll see here is um, two larger leads hooking on the bottom and then uh, two fuses. I uh, believe this mechanism ties to the starter, um, but ultimately what you're going to focus in on are these two leads right here. So one is a positive and one is a negative. Um, and what you're going to find is they both have red uh, kind of shrouding around them. So don't use those colors as designation in regards to whether it's a hot or a cold. Um, the top one is going to be your positive. So that's your hot side, the bottom's a negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this to backfeed the battery with the trickle charger. Um, these are just rubber uh, weather tight uh, grommets that fit over the edge here. So, you know, you're going to struggle a little bit like me, especially if it's hot in and, and Texas and you're sweating. Uh, but you're just going to kind of work that off of that top bolt. I would recommend don't take the bottom one off. That way you're not accidentally hitting uh, a positive against the, the ground and, and shorten something out. So, so leave this one on. Just expose the positive one. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to take your trickle charger, which, uh, as I mentioned before, we... We've got a C-Tech here. Um, there's plenty of videos out there on C-Tech. There's plenty of information. So, you know, you may charge a battery or uh, choose a battery tender or a number of other manufacturers. There's a bunch of them. But at the end of the day, you're going to have two leads. It's going to be a hot and a cold, a positive and a negative. So um, start with your positive and you're going to hook that positive on to that top bolt. Uh, we couldn't really get a good grip on the bolt. As you can see, it easily slips off. So what I did was just kind of hooked it over the top of uh, the actual fastener on the bottom of the wire lead uh, and then over the bottom of the bolt there. So that's your positive. Now your positive's in place. You got redundancy in fuses. Uh, we didn't remove any fuses or anything. Um, now you got to find a ground. There's not enough room to get this negative in here. So what we did was and also what we found uh, on the reference video was just walk it down here and right on the exhaust manifold, you got a real good ground exposed there in the exhaust manifold bolt. So just pop the, the negative on there and there you go. So uh, the good news is it's fairly simple. It's easy to access. It's easy to get to. Um, and you just put that thing on a trickle charger and let it back charge. Now, um, you know, obviously the Italian video, I couldn't really understand what they were saying uh, as I'm not fluent in Italian, but uh, the, the gauge of wire we're dealing with here, it's, it's pretty decent size. Um, maybe you could actually jump the bike uh, using this methodology. Um, I'm definitely not going to recommend it here because I'm not 100% sure as to whether, uh, you know, it's going to pull too much amperage and maybe pop fuses or burn something up or even if the gauge of the wire isn't big enough, it can get pretty hot. You know, I'm, I'm not going to recommend that. Maybe if any of you guys out there have seen or used this before, um, maybe if you've jumped a bike like that, maybe you could drop something in the comments and, and let us know how that goes. But uh, ultimately, get these guys on here, throw it on the trickle charger, let it go overnight, and uh, that'll put some power back in there. Um, now, ultimately, this is kind of, uh, this is a secondary option um, if you don't have uh, a connector to be able to connect into uh, what's supplied under the seat with MV Agusta. So let's pop back up there and I'll show you the preferred method, which is actually the one recommended. Um, so I'm just gonna pull these off so I don't trip over them. 
So we've already got our seat removed. We pulled it off earlier here. Um, and underneath the seat, you're going to find uh, two covered, um, basically, terminations of wires here. Uh, mine, uh, one has a D on it, uh, and the other one is unmarked. So ultimately, on mine, if you kind of look at the size or diameter of these things, you can tell this one's a little bit larger. So this is the MV Augusta supplied trickle charge port. Uh, so if you just pull this off, it's just a piece of rubber. You're not going to hurt anything by just kind of pulling it off there. And it is pretty tight because it's supposed to weather seal it. That way you're not getting a bunch of moisture down in there and starting to ruin things. But uh, ultimately, this is a, a unique style adapter uh, that is unique to this bike. Um, you're not going to get this style adapter as standard uh, equipment with any of your trickle chargers that you're going to purchase unless you buy the MV Augusta. Uh, specific charger um, and most of you guys may want to use your trickle charger on maybe a performance car or something that you have a boat or something like that um, so you don't really want to suicide yourself just to uh, one application so ultimately we obviously opted for the SeaTac uh, charger the SeaTac comes with uh, two different types of leads one is just uh, kind of the, the typical bolt connector leads and then the other is the the clamps that you saw there um, that we used on the uh, alternative method if you don't have this uh, this here but you know I'll drop a couple links here uh, directly below but there are adapters you can purchase um, on Amazon they're readily available uh, I think I ordered mine earlier this week they showed up in three or four days so they're not long lead time items uh, but uh, what you can't find is a MV Augusta directly to SeaTac. So SeaTac has their own proprietary uh, kind of connecting point that they use. So what I was able to find, though, was a SeaTac to SAE adapter and then an SAE to MV Augusta adapter. And I'll actually kind of show you what those look like here. Um, I've got them both right here. So this one right here, this is the MV Augusta to SAE. So you can see it right there listed on the top. Uh, it kind of shows you that it's weather rated and uh, comes with a three year warranty. It's quote unquote premium, uh, but it's, it's pretty simplistic. There's uh, not a bunch of witchcraft here. Um, it's simply uh, just like what you would expect. This here is the SAE end. Um, it has obviously got a weather protection guard on it uh, because the intent would be, you know, this end is going to hook onto the bike. That is the adapter that is the female or the male end uh, that goes into the bike. And the bike has a, uh, you kind of saw it there previously, a little yellow kind of guard to help secure that and make it airtight, weather tight. So this one will go in, it'll stay connected. This one's obviously exposed if it's not charging. So hence the weather protection uh, if it's charging. It is fused. Uh, this one obviously came with a fuse. It's a 15 amp, um, but pretty, pretty standard. Uh, however, this is not a heavy gauge wire. You're not gonna wanna jump the bike through this. So don't go out there trying to put a, a high amperage, uh, you know, jump box or, char or off of a car or something and try and uh, jump the bike through this. I, I definitely would not recommend that. I think you'll end up melting some stuff. Um, so then you saw that went to SAE. So, you know, we get kind of multiple boondoggles here and it's stretching out a little bit, but ultimately it gave me a little more functionality of uh, the trickle charger that I ended up going with. So, um, you know, this one is not fused, but it's it's actually got a comfort light indicator. So, you know, when you plug your charger in, this is going to help you tell you whether it's uh, good to go or whether it's going to be charging or it needs to charge immediately. Um, so this is the uh, SAE adapter. Uh, those two, you know, obviously they fit just like that. So whenever you're charging the bike, you're going to you're going to plug this in, uh, depending on how you would want to set it up. You know, you could go either way of, you know, leaving this connected on the bike at all points in time. And this would be your adapter. You could even fish it out there where it's exposed externally. That way you don't have to pull the seat off every time. Personally, I like my bike to look a little cleaner, so I'm going to leave it underneath the seat um, or at least leave this underneath the seat. And this is going to stay on the charger. 
Uh, most other stuff that uh, you're adapting to is probably going to have either an SAE or you're just going to reach straight for your, uh, you know, your, your, your clamps. Um, now, a little word to the wise here. So we learned the hard way, so don't, you don't have to learn like we did, but um, if you have to use the secondary methodology where you're charging through uh, the leads on the side of the bike and you've used your exhaust manifold uh, to put the negative on, you know, if you start the bike up, obviously you're going to leave a charger on it. You're going to start the bike up. Oh, hey, it's running. Don't get excited and pay attention to the bike and leave your leads on or you're going to end up with a, uh, a reshaped uh, plastic guard on you know, whatever you've got on your clamps. So uh, just keep an eye on that. Make sure you take it off before you heat the bike up because that manifold gets hot and it get hot quick. Um, so... At the end of the day, there's uh, several items. You know, we talked about several items here, but you know, ultimately, you're going to need some sort of either uh, a, a trickle charger that is specified for the bike that has the right adapter on it, or you're going to have to buy uh, an adapter that mates to whatever type of uh, trickle charger you got. Um, as I said, we went with a C-Tech. There's tons of information out there. This is actually the test and charge uh, multi-use unit, so. It can identify whether you're hooking it up to a bike, a car, a boat, etc. Um, and it's also got these progressions that it runs through to test the battery's uh, life. A lot like if you went to an auto parts store and had them test it for you, they'd come out and tell you whether it needs replaced, etc. So uh, the intent here is that it tells you, you know, the the life of the battery and its capabilities, and then ultimately it'll charge it back for you. Um, at whatever uh, desired charge is needed. So, you know, if it needs a full charge, it's going to pump the power to it. If it's charged and it just needs residual trickle, uh, it's going to—it's smart. It's going to flip over to that and it's going to do what you need. Um, so that's what we got. Uh, that is how to uh, get your MV Augusta going if you are short on power. <laughs>